Hey, what's up, guys? This is Brian from Whisper Status 74. This is a 1080p Blu-ray settings video for the Sony 900E. You can also use this for the 940E, 930E, and even the 900F. It should apply very similarly to all of those displays. Why I want to do this video, and I've done, I did one about six months ago, was on 1080p settings because a lot of you were not looking to double dip to 4K as you're finding a stronger screen structure. You're not really seeing a huge improvement. So you want to utilize the thousand movies you already own. And I really do agree. Though my favorite part about buying Blu-rays was always buying classic films and seeing how well they've improved. I think we've kind of hit a wall over the improvement aspect of it. So I would keep your Blu-rays and wait for the reviews to come out on Blu-rays and say if and pick from there. The Avengers Blu-rays were amazing. They were a big jump from the 1080p. However, most of the films that I have on 1080p, I don't find to be that big a jump. And I'll only buy new 4K Blu-rays unless I am completely blown away by the review. Or it's my favorite movies of all time. This is Godzilla on Blu-ray. I was in here messing around with some movies. And Godzilla is a dark film. And it is a little bit of a grainy film. And I'd love to show you a picture of Godzilla, but he's barely in the movie. What I want to do is go through the settings with you guys and also talk about why some of these settings are going to be a little bit subdued and which ones I think you should turn up and turn down to get away from some of the grain, the softness, and to understand that your Blu-rays were never meant to be on a 1,000, 2,000 nit display. You know, I'm not sure the science behind them being mastered, but they were never designed to have gamma up so high and to have... That's why all of the calibrations that you would see on older displays were always very subdued. They were very natural. Now these displays are two or three times brighter than those displays were and we're wondering why our Blu-rays don't look very good. As far as HDR, you know, HDR ramps all your settings up so there's very little wriggle room, but in terms of 1080p, there really is. Also, in terms of blooming, guys, you should not see blooming on your 1080p Blu-rays. So if you look at the black bars, even with this camera, they are jet black. So you shouldn't see blooming. Um, if you do, I'll show you what to turn off and you'll see if it helps you. Um, so in this picture adjustments, we're going to go down to, for me, I'm going to go into Cinema Home. Because I do want to have, oh, I don't even have it enabled right here. I do want to have my auto 20 feet, 24p sync enabled. Brightness, oh, excuse me. Brightness, I do have down to 10. Now, that's blasphemy. A lot of you guys are like, wait a minute. If you have a display with such a high peak brightness, remember, guys, we're not looking to wash out the image. We want the image to be as true and to look as artifact-free as we possibly can. So bring that backlight down so the artifacting and the fuzziness kind of goes away. Artings.com, AVS Forums, actually want this at, like, 3. So I don't agree with going that dark, but... Try backing down your backlight. Brightness is actually the backlight, in case you guys didn't know. It's very confusing, I understand. Color is subjective. This is saturation. You can do this wherever you like. 50, I believe, is the default. Some material I love going very high on. I keep it at about 55. This is all up to you. Light sensor, keep that off. It'll dim your picture according to your room luminance, and you don't need that. Contrast, I keep it 90. I don't like my whites to clip. I don't like the picture to look too washed out like we said before. Gamma is another one that people tend to pump up. I actually knock my gamma down minus 2 with 1080p Blu-rays, specifically older Blu-rays. And even some of my PC games are minus 1. Black level is the actual brightness and is typically at 50. It washes out the image, especially on older Blu-rays. So I like to take it down to 40. You can actually take it down more. But what we're looking for is that OLED kind of dark, beautiful, natural picture without the grain structure being too overpowering. Black adjust, I actually do like black adjust on. I'm probably one of the only people that enjoys it on. I do like how it defines the edges a little bit, but that one is subjective as well. I do like a little more depth in my picture. Advanced contrast is a huge no-no on older films or films that have a grain structure. Films like Avatar or Pixar films or anything like that, then advanced contrast until your heart's content. But for the most part, on not lower quality, but on older or film-based content, it will definitely cause artifacting. 
it'll make some facial you know shots look really really stunning and then the other stuff will get very very soft and also you know very very fuzzy so advanced contrast enhancer use it when you can if it's high quality or animation if not i would keep it off auto local dimming a lot of websites will recommend turning this to medium i do not want to see any kind of clouding so i always keep it on high extended dynamic range guys um is used primarily for HDR as it's on HDR by default when it when it comes on. It behaves a lot sometimes like advanced contrast enhancer. It also will create some blooming on non-HDR content, which is what we don't want. We don't want in static dynamic range for things to be overly hot and popping everywhere as it wasn't designed or mastered to do that. So for me, um, again, content that can handle it, put it on. But for your typical stuff, in, in some cases, they need to make a difference. But if you see some issues with blooming, turn it off. With this movie, it's not doing anything. But if you do have bloom, blooming, sometimes that's the, the um, culprit. In HDR, though, do not turn this off. It'll knock you out of HDR. Color, this one is all up to you. You can keep it however you like. I typically like my picture to be a little bit cooler. Export one or two are supposedly the most accurate. Again, that's up to you. Live color, again, sometimes shows up. Sometimes it does not in standard definition. So whatever one you feel is more accurate. If you see things looking pink that are supposed to be red, that one you want off. Clarity. In clarity, with the green structure, sharpness at 50 with Sony TVs, I believe is at 50 is default zero. So by lowering this below 50, you're going negative into the sharpness. I find it does remove a lot of the noise. It doesn't make the picture look soft. It just removes the noise. It removes the, not the grain, but the extra grain you would see from taking a Blu-ray source and upscaling it to 4K. Also, those of you with large displays, this TV is 75 inches. The less grain, the better, um, unless it's natural grain from the film itself. Try lowering your sharpness down you don't have to go all the way to zero because remember 50 is supposedly zero knock that one down reality creation i tend to stay away from i don't like what it does to the image but some people love it um to me it's like a false not doing much here actually but at times it can create artifacting i tend to keep it off or you can keep it at auto master in 4k is on its own random noise reduction digital noise reduction they tend to actually in some cases Create noise, which makes no sense at all, but sometimes it does. I tend to either keep it off or at auto. The higher I put it, the more artifacting I see. Smooth gradation, this is one I get slammed for. I don't like it at all. Um, for me, it causes artifacting or dirty screen effect in the skybox, particularly in games and movies. It's not that big a deal because it does. It smooths things out horizontally, or I'm sorry, vertically or you'll see artifacts horizontally, if that makes sense. So it might smooth it out one way, but in the opposite way, you may see lines, or you may see... It might be the other way. Actually, it might be horizontal versus vertical. Either way, it'll cause, at least for me, some DSC, and I'm not really interested in that, so I keep it off. Some people love it. In motion, again, totally up to you. You can keep it on custom. For a judder-free experience without motion interpolation, Cinepro is the way to go. Um, if you... Clear is a functional, it does knock the brightness down, but it will make your picture look more natural. I never use it. 940E owners can use clearness if you're seeing some motion issues. And then you go into your video options. All this is at auto. Now, for those of you who like to keep your displays at full instead of limited, you know, in HDR, it's all going to switch out anyway. So I don't mess with these, but keep them at auto for myself anyway. So the idea is to make things, again, as natural as possible, guys. And I know it's a bit of a turnoff. You want to see all of this stuff pumped as highly as you can. But understand that when you do that, it blows out the image, as you'll see here. And I think it's just Cine Pro that I have it on its default. Now, it's going to be a lot brighter, but look how it washes it out. So try those settings for 1080p. They're going to see subdued. Try backing down some of those settings, guys, and let me know if they help you in any way. Thank you, as always. These are 1080p settings. Take care.